Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind. Well, it seems like it's the end of yet again another witch hunt. Obviously, we're talking about Fannie Willis here. We may get into some of the stuff that's going on with Jack Smith if we have some time later, but of course the focus here is Fannie Willis. There's really only one way to describe this whole series of events. An absolute frickin' shit show. Well, what can I say, folks? The shit show continues. As Fannie Willis gives up and straight up just admits that yes, she was in a relationship with Nathan Wade. Here's why this is massive, why it's important. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so let's take a look at the report here. Fannie Willis now admits to having a personal relationship with Nathan Wade, but she insists that the Trump case shouldn't be tossed. Embattled Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis admitted to having a personal relationship with lead prosecutor Nathan Wade, but said it shouldn't warrant tossing out the charges against former President Donald Trump and his co-defendants. In 2022, District Attorney Willis and I developed a personal relationship in addition to our professional association and friendship, Wade wrote in an affidavit released by Willis' office in court papers they filed on Friday. But the court papers said there was no personal relationship at the time that Wade was hired. Now, ah, that's an interesting defense. Too bad I'm not buying it. Although District Attorney Willis and Special Prosecutor Wade have been professional associates and friends since 2019, there was no personal relationship between them in November of 2021 at the time of Special Prosecutor Wade's appointment, the court paper said. Trump co-defendant Michael Roman last month filed bombshell court papers seeking to have criminal charges dropped against him on conflict of interest grounds based on Willis's alleged clandestine romantic relationship with Wade. Okay, so we see the defense. Obviously, the goalposts are moving moving here. At first it was absolutely not, nothing has ever happened. Then as more evidence dropped, it was, well actually, anybody questioning my appointment of Nathan Wade is a racist. And now of course, after all the little scandal drips, the goalposts have been moved, and it's, well we were dating, but we weren't dating at the time that I hired him. The first question that I have is, what exactly does that change? Here's the answer, literally frickin' nothing. If anything, it proves Fannie Willis's complete disregard for ethical norms. It shows a total lack of character and judgment, and most importantly, the conflict of interest remains. Donald Trump actually released a post on Truth Social, which I think really puts it all into perspective. You know, they keep telling us how dumb Trump is, but he certainly does seem to have some pretty awesome takes every now and then. I guess he isn't the dummy that the media tells us he is. He writes, Fannie Willis, the DA of Fulton County, just admitted to having a sexual relationship with the prosecutor that she, in consultation with the White House and DOJ, appointed to, quote, get at Donald J. Trump. By going after the most high-level person and the Republican nominee, she was able to get her lover much more money, almost a million dollars, than she would be able to get for the prosecution of any other person or individual. That means that this scam is totally discredited and over. He is right on the frickin' money. And you know what? This is probably the conversation that we ought to be having. Think about the astronomical sum of money that was handed over to Nathan J. Wade in this effort to prosecute Donald Trump. The reason that amount is so high is because it's such a complex case involving 14 co-defendants, the former president of the United States, and of course they decided to make it a RICO case, which I guess you would expect to kind of complicate things in a way, right? So because of the outstanding circumstances, she was able to secure nearly $700,000 for this specific prosecutor alone. And it's a big freaking problem if you're funneling that kind of money to your lover boy as the district attorney. Who's to say that it's not one big scam? That Fannie Willis Willis knew that if she would prosecute Donald Trump and all of his co-defendants, she knew that she would be able to then justify millions of dollars spent in that case. She could then take that money and funnel it to her lover boy, then go on lavish, beautiful luxury vacations with him, and boom, you've enriched yourself and increased your political stock. If that's not a conflict of interest, if that's not corrupt action, then I don't know what it is. And even if Fannie Willis's story is correct here, that actually that wasn't the attention initially, she just happened to fall in love with him, and now they're dating, it doesn't exonerate her. It doesn't take away the possibility that she may be lying, and that actually she was acting in such corrupt fashion. She put herself in that predicament, and now there's pretty much no getting out of it. All of these excuses and all these BS justifications after the fact change absolutely nothing. There's another thing that we heard last week that, well, the reason she hired Nathan Wade was because no other person wanted to take the job. She pinged a couple top prosecutors and nobody wanted to take the case, so she was just stuck with Nathan Wade. Give me a freaking break. You mean to tell me she couldn't find a prosecutor interested in being paid $700,000 to become a Democrat hero? Impossible. Literally impossible. 
impossible. I'm sure there's a couple people who are reluctant because they like their prosecutorial, uh, let's call it record and, well, dignity. But the idea that she couldn't find somebody more qualified than Nathan Wade, a guy with literally zero prosecutorial experience, who mostly focuses on workplace accidents, it's just not a believable story. Nothing is believable, especially when these kinds of clips of Fannie Willis keep popping up. The district attorney's office in Fulton should be the beacon of the Southeast. It should be the absolute best office between Washington, D.C. and Miami. And right now what you have is a office of dysfunction and corruption, and we deserve better. And I am the right choice to improve it. Corruption, uh, Ms. Willis, that's a strong word uh, to level against the office that Paul Howard has run for nearly a quarter of a century. If he, if he gets reelected, it'd be more than 25 years. You have a DA sitting there that doesn't have the qualifications and the experience to do the job. What I can guarantee you is with my reputation, with my community ties, I am going to be able to attract the best and the brightest minds to that office. You're sitting with someone today that actually wants to make a difference because they deserve a DA that won't have sex with his employees, because they deserve a DA that won't put money in their own pocket when it should go to benefit fit children because we deserve better. She literally ran on a campaign of rooting out corruption from the district attorney's office in Fulton County, saying it's dysfunctional and chaotic, and then she created an absolute corrupt cesspool. We're done here, right? I mean, we ought to be freaking done. In a sane world, Donald Trump's take is what happens almost immediately. End this scam. Fannie Willis is totally discredited. This case should be over. We have clear prosecutorial misconduct, a clear political bias and prejudice, way too many conflicts of interest to even start naming, but let's name a couple enriching herself, her association with the White House, and of course career advancement. As we know, district attorneys are essentially Democrat politicians. This case should be dismissed based on prejudice immediately, and Fannie Willis should now become the target of investigation. And while speaking of that, that might be exactly what's happening. Jim Jordan has officially subpoenaed Fannie Willis. Eight minutes past the hour now, House Judiciary Chair uh, Jim Jordan apparently subpoenaed Fulton County DA Fannie Willis for documents after three attempts that he had made to get her to respond to requests voluntarily to no avail. Uh, the subpoena is now for documents, not an appearance now, related to the Fulton County DA's use and misuse, allegedly, of federal funds. Willis is under the microscope uh, for this alleged improper romantic relationship with a special prosecutor that she hired for the Georgia election interference case. That's the big RICO case now stacked up against former President Donald Trump and many others. So we will see how that turns out for that Jim Jordan. That case is my new one life to live. And so I guess we'll have to see what happens here. And just in conclusion, my view, I can't possibly see a scenario where this case is relevant in the 2024 election cycle. It's an absolute embarrassment at this point for Democrats. And it's obviously not gonna finish up by the Democrat November deadline, now is it? That's the update. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.